Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David. And in today's video, I would like to talk about this particular type of begonia known as Iron Cross Begonia. So sit back and enjoy the show. This particular begonia, actually I found it in a local nursery here and I would like to give some plant review concerning this plant care. I must say that this particular one is really difficult to care for. Unlike most of the Rex begonias or even cane begonias, this one is highly sensitive. And one of the factors that I actually notice here is because of this particular special needs, they are very much like the highland types where they cannot handle too much of any of the strong elements. They will not do very well in hot sun, neither do they do very well in wet areas. So to find an exact perfect environment for them is very much important, especially the humidity factor. I'm pretty sure there are so many begonia lovers here like me who love challenges and who will continue to purchase and try them to figure out exactly what actually works best. In my context, I have actually have had them successful until I made a mistake of application of strong fertilizer on them and the whole plant died. But before that, I want to explain to you on the context of what is the most important thing to do before getting into the collection of iron cross begonias. What I can actually suggest to you by my years of experience is to select a strong healthy plant especially purchasing them in the local nursery here. And so that is my tip number one is to find a perfect plant perfect in a sense that healthy and rigorous plant because if you were to buy a dying plant chances are that it will not recover and most cases the plant will die out of shock furthermore because of due stress. Here I want to make an emphasis on what is actually healthy plant and so in a, in a way to observe them and these are the tips that I would like to share. First thing first is to check on the leaves. Always check where the side of the leaves that there are no sign of burns or rot. This is a very utmost and important factor to see. One thing I can tell you that if you can look at the iron cross, the sign of it is not so strong. That means to say that in the central part of it where the cross supposed to be appearing visible and evident is not there. This is a sign to say that the plant is receiving too much bright hot sunlight. One of the other factors that you have to watch out for is that it is okay to receive enough sun, enough light but it's not so much in a factor that it burns the plant. So the measure of it is that when a plant is receiving too much light, the center portion of it appears to be smaller and crinkled. So the remedy for this particular plant is to actually after purchasing them is to keep them in more uh, shaded area rather than receiving too much bright sunlight. You will notice that the pricing of this particular begonia, the iron cross begonia is slightly more expensive than common begonia plants. One of these reasons is a due factor of where this particular one is quite sensitive and difficult to cultivate. Now another factor that I want to mention here is to check on the stem of the leaves. Here you can see they are actually furry and sturdy. In most cases when I actually notice that after two weeks or three weeks when this particular plant is actually delivered in this nursery here, the most of the caregivers may not look into it properly and just water them according to any other ordinary plant which will cause this particular plant to wither or start to rot. And so this is very important factor that you take note of to purchase the plant when the plant has arrived from the main central nursery where it has been cultivated. This way you will know that the plant is actually fresh and chances of survival is far more stronger and durable compared to the plant that has been going through stress especially when it's receiving too much water, too much sun and too much of the weather which is not suitable for this begonia. As you can take note over here, you can notice that this particular leaf has actually dried off and has fallen but it is not fully dried. So this is a telltale sign where the plant is receiving too much water and you can see a slight uh, burns and you can see the rot is actually setting in. Uh, it is not too late to save this plant. 
Uh, but however, if you're a new beginner or a novice, I would suggest skip this particular part. One of the things here is because it's actually going downhill and chances of recovery is slim and slow. Unless the nursery vendor is selling you half the price and slash the price with a good offer, I would mention to you not to indulge in these types of plants. So checking the flower plant to check and see whether everything is in good condition is value for money and also uh, determines the highest success of you uh, in achieving a good iron cross begonia collection. Now another main culprit here is actually the planting medium. Here the, the nursery uh, vendors is actually using coconut peat for this particular plant. I must say that it may be very suitable for highland condition where watering is not so much of a problem but when it comes to lowland climate watering is one of the most important factors that need to be taken care of and when it comes to cocoa peat I don't think so uh, for iron cross begonia it is suitable for them to be grown for long term cultivation. Now the main uh, problem here or to say uh, the trick is to actually uproot and take out and change the soil medium but in order to do so the plant will actually go through stress. So the duration of the stress that actually takes place this is the, the crucial moment whether to know whether the plant is healthy to go through the element of stress. So if the plant is actually dying or stressed and when you change the uh, planting medium chances are the plant will wither and die it has uh, more on the downhill factor rather than selecting the plant that is healthy and when you do change the potting medium it will reg uh, it will grow back and will actually jump start itself to a better plant so do take note that if you are actually growing iron cross beginner in low land climate change the potting media using coconut chips and sand which I find that this is the best medium to use of course uh, different gardeners may actually uh, will recommend you using different types of uh, potting medium in most cases it might be spanner moss and perlite but in my case I find that when it comes to uh, wet and dry and uh, hot weather coconut chips and sand seems to be a very good uh, selection for this kind of garden condition so right now I've come to the end of my video. I would really appreciate if you can click like and subscribe my channel and also if you can click the notification bell and put on your comments on any of the curious concerning this particular plant. And I would like to come to my last uh, and final tips on this. In my suggestion, in my experience, I would actually explain to you that if you indeed want this particular begonia and you really fall in love with it, try to get the ones that has been acclimated, acclimatized at around your garden condition. This is very important. So if you can, do purchase this particular plant from a gardener who is willing to pass you his, collection, his or her collection to you and if he can ask whether they can sell it to you because in that kind of context this particular plant has already weathered the storm in a way that has been acclimatized to the lowland climate. I find that in this kind of chances this particular plant has a very strong chance of survival compared to when it comes from a highland source where it will never go able to handle withstand the stress that it goes through and most cases all of these types of plants succumbs to stress and they may wither and die away. What I would really like to mention to you here is that it only takes one success uh, experience for you to actually enjoy the whole collection of these Messiana types of begonia. These furry leaves types of begonia do not like water on them. So do take note not to sprinkle or spray or even mist on their leaves. Rather that you just handled on their potting medium. I hope you enjoyed my plant review here and hope to catch you in my next video. Take care and see you again. Have a nice day. Bye.